Sometimes I'm better whenever I, I haven't had enough sleep, and we'll see how that, we'll see if that's the case today. It's actually, I did sleep, but I slept in Parker's room, or like I fell asleep on the couch downstairs, and then he woke me up, and Eric had a meeting that went really late. So this will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna decide to get it together. Just delete all that and act like this is normal. Do y'all get nervous doing this? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Well, now I will. <laughs> <laughs> I was calm. <laughs> I was too calm, now I'm not too calm. I get, I get nervous doing everything. I, yeah, but, well, I've said it on this podcast too many times. What? I won't say it again. That, that nervous just means that you're about to do something that you care about. Yeah. And that that's a good feeling. You I just want to stop caring, though. Oh, oh. You don't want to care about this being here right now? I just care too much about all of it. Yeah. Ugh. Um, first of all, could, <laughs> you, what if that, yeah, um, you can't say that too many times. I listen to so many things and I feel like the best, the people that are the best at, I don't know, this or radio or whatever, they just say the same things over and over and they don't apologize for it. So don't apologize okay. for it. Okay. And, um, I don't know. <laughs> I think Carrie, what if I just was like all of a sudden really good at this? <laughs> Got one cup you of are. coffee, just did it. You guys are really um, good at this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> um, I want to know how to do the thing where you like move your head like away at the right moment to My make things technique. not. Technique. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that and maybe like media training. I don't know what for, but I just would like that. That feels like that would make me more comfortable. I wonder if it would help with rhythm. Yes. You know. Yeah. Yeah, the therapy's not really helping with that. I don't feel like <laughs> with the, with like the speak the cadence of the speaking. Hmm. Well, you already have that. The st- staccato is what I, I've been. Yeah, when I get freaked out. Yeah, I get to edit her, which is always a treat <laughs> because of long, uh, long because pauses, just, uh, uh, lots um, of things, uh, mm, the, mm, and then I'll just like completely forget what I was talking about and then meander on to something else. And then, oh, that's, what was I saying? And then this, and then it goes this way. And that's me. Sometimes I look like I just died for a second. <laughs> so if there's a long pause, it's just me really trying to collect it all and really? get it back in, into a lane. Okay. Well, you look really good while you do that. I don't, I, my, I have like do a lot of eye stuff that just means, makes me seem like I'm just not okay. Sarah just does like giving up. She'll start a sentence and she'll be like, oh, oh, this is all, it. just cut this whole thing. I don't know. What I do I'm it saying. too. Cause I'm like, I don't want to hear myself say this. So you're not going to want to hear myself say this. So I'm going to just stop in the middle of that story and let's just move on. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, usually I want to hear myself say it, but, um, I'm, I'm so uncomfortable with the idea that you might not want to hear it. <laughs> Then I just stop. Same. That's what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you feel like you I have that. put too much weight to every, like, is that a running thing for, for you, for everything? You're like, I put too I much weight to all of it. I could sprout tears, just that. Yeah. 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 Everything. The pressure. Yeah. I feel that. Mm-hmm. I also just heard someone say, and it came at a good time for me to hear it. And obviously this is on a spectrum of some sort of balance. There can be too much pressure in a negative way. But I heard someone say that pressure is a privilege and that having somebody expect something of you and believe that you can accomplish something, mm-hmm. having a goal, whatever. I don't know. I was like, I needed, yeah, I needed that reminder that mm-hmm. sometimes I can be a victim to it constantly. Yeah. And it helped me be like, yeah, you're right. I, I needed to hear that little, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. That is helpful. Back myself more. Yeah, I, I always th- think about the pressure that I put on myself. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel like it necessarily came from a place from my parents when I was young. I mean, I just feel like I was kind of born out of the womb like that. But when I switched the thinking to thinking like having this support system around that cares what you're doing, mm-hmm. that's where it, I can see it being healthy. Yeah. 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 Anyway, there's a little treat for you guys today. Yeah. Um <laughs> Yum. I thought that I wouldn't be able to cry because I was so young. I thought that I wouldn't be able to cry because that coffee makes me really numb, but I probably could. And I, I think about, this is sad. See, that's one of Same. them. It's just awful. I would not want to listen to this. That's real. But that um, 
I think about whenever I get all like bogged down and all this shit, I've said this before, and this is not something people want to hear again, <laughs> that then I, and this is really like punishing yourself, but that, uh, then I think about when you get old or mature and your kid's not at home and how that feels. And then I'm like, you're going to be, you know, mad if you don't you do it. And I'm grateful for this. Okay. Yeah. It's terrible. Do cut that. It's yeah. awful. It's not fun to listen to. No, I, um, I liked it. Sometimes I will feel myself protecting myself for that future. Like I'll find myself keeping my kids at arm's length sometimes mm-hmm. because I'm protecting myself for when they're gone. In what way? Like give an example. Like you have walls up? Yeah. I know what you mean. I think I... Walls up? Yeah, I think sometimes I will not fully let myself feel certain things and be like, mm. uh, I'm just going to like be, I'm going to just be chill about this because, uh, and I'm going to focus on my own stuff and the things I'm working on because that way when you're mm. not here and you don't need me anymore, like I'm going to be totally fine. I'm going to have all this stuff that I've been doing. And you're able to compartmentalize that mm. and do that. I don't think so. I mean, I think I still... I mean, there's going to be a wave, yeah. surely, a huge tidal wave of grief <laughs> that's just waiting for us all. That's, that's a good title. The river of grief. That's something that I talk about all the time. Hmm. After having a child, I mean, I don't know if it's because I did it so late, so I set up this life of mm-hmm. whatever, you know, and... um I was thinking about it coming in today, though, just like having a kid at midlife, two major things happening at the mm-hmm. same time and coming to, to terms with so many things. And yeah, you yeah. can create this river of grief because you're grieving the, the life before, but also you're going, what does second half of life look like mm-hmm. at the same time navigating a young kid? navigating your career and navigating aging parents mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So that's, like that's all, good. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I find like, uh, grieving every phase or lately anyway, he's just been f- just fantastic lately. And I'm feeling that like, I don't, m- like mom son thing that people talk I'm just obsessed with him mm. and we keep like looking at each other in the eyes and I'm like I know what you mean but I'm like actually Waltz would be wise cuz I'm just way this is way too important mm-hmm. <laughs> this is not this is not safe <laughs> no no one is safe here no <laughs> it's awful <sighs> I know what you mean, though, that connection whenever you just are, like, locked Mm -hmm. in the eye contact and when you're just, like, soul breathing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that is so scary and so sweet. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean for this to be like this, but let me do your intro. Maybe that'll take us in a different direction. Let's get the intro over with. Okay. Uh, like after this, it's like an intro, and then there's like a really um, like a down, down navy like like strings or something like just awful, <laughs> terrible, just so sad. We're in here with just stars over our face. I would never listen to this. Why are you listening to this? I would. Um, I know normal people would. Um. This is what makes me the most nervous doing this part. The always. intro? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Our guest today came into my awareness when I was 22. Always a student of the social strata in Nashville. She seemed to be at some sort of peak that I was not really privy to. And I'm, <laughs> some photos of her were presented as part of a creative deck. And I couldn't believe that she was a local person walking among us. Over the years, our paths crossed again and again, and I learned that she's a a warm, lovely, ultra-creative, silly, down-to-earth, deeply funny lady. She's an indie pop artist and songwriter with a long list of serious credits, and why am I going to cry now? What? I don't even see you. I don't even know you. I barely know you. Ugh. (laughs) This is not okay. (laughs) 
<laughs> and esteemed accolades. Currently, she's writing for a new project of her own and writes for other artists. Um, and she does many creative things. And she's married to fellow beloved local musician, K.S. Rhodes. They have one daughter, Ziggy, who is four. Welcome, Erin McCarley. Yay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I love mm-hmm. being here. I've missed both of you. Yes. I know. I miss your face. I feel like the first time I really got to hang out with you was when we went hiking. Oh, yeah. For, was, was that, that Ian's that... birthday? Maybe so. I was going to say Kevin's, but I think it was Ian's. I think it was Ian's, yeah. and I don't even know why <laughs> I was invited. <laughs> Well, I think I just must have, I think I was probably maybe, no, I think I was just out and about at the right time and maybe saw someone like a couple days before. And so it was like a, Hey, this week we're going to do this thing. Cause it's not like I see Ian all the time. Well, I don't either. Emily West was with us too, right? It was such a random group of people, (laughs) but it was so, it was so fun. I loved it. I know. I need to see a picture of this day. (laughs) But I feel like you guys had been, we talked for a little bit in the van. You guys had been trying. And I, had you already, had you had one miscarriage by then? I'm forgetting the name of what it's called whenever it shows up as a pregnancy, but then you Uh, go. Chemical? Chemical, yeah. Okay. So I had one miscarriage and one chemical, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is there anything you don't want to talk about? (laughs) No. Okay. Nah, I think she's fine. I'll say it. If we start talking about it, I'll be like, <laughs> she'll just not respond. <laughs> she's cool. <laughs> she'll just go. Go cold. Yeah. <laughs> start Literally crying fun. silently. <laughs> My skin is a chameleon. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, it's funny because we waited a long time. Um, I think I was 38 when I finally was like, I think maybe we could do this. Mm-hmm. Still feels very scary and... Do we want to give all that up and, you know? Yeah. Did you physically start feeling like you were ready or how did that process work for you? I think it was just where we were in life. Uh, It's funny because it didn't, because we didn't give it the biggest effort. Right. We weren't just like. (laughs) Right. If it it happens, it happens. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but it was really obvious after I had that first miscarriage that I wanted it. Got it. And. So then, yeah, we, we gave it a better effort. And then it took, yeah, it took a minute. And I was pregnant at 40 mm-hmm. and induced on my 41st birthday. Mm. I didn't, was she born on your birthday? So no, I wish. Um, she, well, so I was induced at 10, or 8 p.m., 10 p.m. or something. And she didn't come until 12, 20, so on the 8th, January 8th. And then she came 12, 22 on the 10th. Dang, the tent, a whole nother day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I was trying to, to go al natural and everything. And when I was two weeks late mm-hmm. from my due date. And so Whoa. being 40. And yeah. tiny person. My doctor was, she was so cool because she just, she knew what I wanted. And she was trying to to be patient facilitate. with me and facilitate, but also be smart and take care of me. Yeah. And so she's like, I'm not letting you go past two weeks late. Mm-hmm. And I wound up having to have an emergency C-section. So, mm. yeah, were you? It, was that um, was that hard for you to mm-hmm. come to terms with? Yeah, I've heard a couple of your podcasts, and you know, um, I feel like I can't remember the guest's name, but she kind of had a similar thing where, or she she was talking about how she didn't have a a set plan. And I was told that over and over again. Don't right. Don't set your eyes on doing, you know, they're going to come however they're going to come. And it was still hard. Yeah. You know, I tried not to care. And I also didn't research all the different ways, just the w- way that I was thinking that it was going to go. Mm-hmm. Right. So I had no idea what a C-section entailed and, you know, what that was going to be. So when, when I, I, I think uh, I never got to the point where I was able to push I got to like three centimeters dilated at most. So then I had to do the Mm. toast and I had to Mm -hmm. do the epidural, all of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, then finally C-section. So, but that was, I mean, it was a a beautiful experience whenever it happened. Intense. Yeah. I remember watching like the video of the C-section, like when I was, we were like in our class learning all the options. (laughs) Oh yeah, the C-section option. I was like, oh, yeah. I really don't want to do either of these. Options. Yeah, 
can we figure out a different way to get him out? So brutal. (laughs) I know. So I had a um, Joy Shaw was my doula, and she was she was so helpful, Um, very calming. Oh gosh, here's one story. (laughs) This is throwing my husband under the under the table. Surely this has to be a Kevin story. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm on the yoga ball. I've got my hands on the bed, and just pain and joy is just like you know um coached me through the breathing so i'm kind of there on my own like doing doing the roll (laughs) and kevin comes up behind me he's hungry (laughs) and he kind of whisk not whispers Uh. but just softly sings uh hang on let me get it he sings Uh -uh. Uh, that that Cars for Kids song commercial that you hear on Lightning 100. K-A-R-S, Cars for Kids. <laughs> Sings that in my ear while I'm literally having a contraction. And I was like, oh God. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Go get some lunch. <laughs> Wait, how did you know he was hungry? So he'd been complaining that he was hungry prior. Are you just new? We must have had some sort of conversation <clears throat> before that contraction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he just comes walking up. <laughs> I think trying to like lighten the mood. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, yeah, our go-to is always comedy to diffuse, <laughs> right, you know. Right, right. Like, not in that not moment. Not the time. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Looking at the car wash. <laughs> Honk, beep, beep, look at the car wash. Yeah. Did you know that Sarah and I both work at a car wash? <laughs> Isn't that exciting? And also so odd. And it's called Camel Express Car Wash, and it's an incredible company, and they're making some changes soon to their offerings. And what our top wash will now include this thing that's called graphene. And this is real, this is, re- these are real facts, okay, about graphene um, that I know just an inordinate amount about. It won a Nobel Prize, this uh-huh, material. Uh-huh. It's the, it's thinner than an atom. It, it's used for all kinds of crazy things like, like insane atom splitting, really smart stuff. But it also is being used in car washes and it's like a wax coating and it can adhere to all the surfaces of your cars in, in a way that like wax has never been able to before. And it's incredibly thin, but also incredibly strong. So it protects and repels water. And also because it's so thin and and it like adheres in to every single like little surface on the like paint of your car, then this is doing a great job, guys. Uh, are, I'm it reflects interested. light and it makes your car look like brighter and shinier than like it even does regularly. It's really, it's like really interesting, cool stuff. You can visit Camel Express Car Wash and get a free, the best wash by texting code MOMCULT to 30400. And you can try that new product, Graphene, today. I'm sorry, I skipped over because I was talking about when we first, uh, at the lot, like our main hang that I remember us having on that hike. And um, that led me into, into kid stuff. So I, I skipped our check-in so we can How's your week, Erin? Oh, goodness. What was it? So this week has been packing for spring break. Ah, yes. And the pressure that I put on myself. Mm -hmm. Mm. I'm a preparer. Mm. The privilege that you put on yourself. (laughs) Privilege. (laughs) The privilege to pack for my children. (laughs) I'd like to see that. You got some like packing cubes. Like what does that look like? Oh, my God. I wish. I should. That would help. What do you tell? I like all that. Yep. Mm Mm-hmm. I have rounds. I mean, I do it when it's just me going on a trip where it's like you get part of your closet and you put in your closet the things that could possibly go with you. Mm -hmm. Round one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you start grabbing stuff, putting it over closer to the suitcase, Uh you know, where then there's like a pile on the floor. Mm -hmm. Then you put it in. That's round two. (laughs) Put it into the suitcase. (laughs) Put too much stuff into the suitcase. Round three. round three. No, I'm at round, round four, four taking and some I'm stuff editing. Out. Mm. <laughs> There's got to be a better way. Help. Do you, um, oh, I'm I'm bad to pack like really close too, but I do think those packing cubes make all the difference. 
And like, I don't know. Why? Because I could like contain everything into little sections. So I put Parker stuff in one thing and then like pair outfits together or put, um, is this like the main way I'm organized, I guess, but like shirts or, um, but I can do that within the suitcase without the cubes. Oh, are these right? cubes, they go inside your suitcase or this is like yeah, to prepare to like, put them in the suitcase. They're like little, I don't know what they're made of, nylon or something. And they've got like little nets you can see. I mean, they have all different kinds, but then gotcha. you zip them up. They're just like little ways to section it off. What are the things okay. called that takes the air out? Oh, oh uh, like vacuum those. bags. You have those? Yeah, that's what I need. Oh, just oh, 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 oh. You like to bring it preparing, like you like to bring everything or do you, are you like, I don't you want like it to, to. <laughs> you want it to get it all into I a tiny to. bag or you, you get any satisfaction? I love options. Uh, I don't know what yeah. I'm going to feel like mm-hmm. when I'm there. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the, like if the wind changes and yeah. I'm, I don't, God forbid, be God cold, forbid, you yeah. know? Yeah. Your fashion is very important. I think. Well, well let me. It's just how I feel. So if mm-hmm. I put if yeah. I have to put something on and I don't feel that, then I'm it, it's it's going to be a terrible day friction. for everybody. <laughs> well, yeah. I wasn't asking you. I was saying your fashion is very important to me. It's very it's good. It's very good. I, that should have been in your intro. I don't know why I didn't say that. Um, I'm, we're going to Gatlinburg for spring break, and I'm like, do I have to pack for summer and winter? I don't I have I, no idea. I'm I know supposed to it's, pack. It's hard when it's a layering situation. If it's yeah. just hot or just cold, it's mm-hmm. so much easier. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we're going to Destin and it's like... You can't know. Right. In the 60s. It's chilly at night. Yeah. I know. Mm-hmm. And then I get there and I wear half. Mm-hmm. And I'm annoyed because of all the extra there. Then that creates anxiety. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I just... I, I love simplicity, mm. but I'm not simple. Right. Mm. But you want to be... it. Mm-hmm. I get a lot of satisfaction about like out of getting everybody's stuff into one bag, but that inevitably makes the bag overweight. Mm-hmm. So that's stressful. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sarah, how's your week? I already did mine. It was still oh. cognitively hormonal and in love and oh. Oh. eye contact stuff. I have like a religion thing that I might bring up later, but <laughs> you know, do that. It's too early. <laughs> yeah. Just just really it, in the if episode. it felt right. I love it. <laughs> my mom, just the teaser is that my mom was talking to him of earth. She, she acted like he asked about Jesus. And I was like, like she has this cane that allegedly looks like Jesus. And I'm like, that doesn't even look like drawings of Jesus that I've seen that seem like they're not, it's not like an Americanized version of. So I don't think he just went, oh, tell me about Jesus. She has a cane or he has a cane? <laughs> she she okay. has a bunch of canes. And, and um, so he just saw the cane and allegedly. Jesus. Allegedly. Yeah. That's asked about Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when he got in the car, he said, I said, what? Or she was like, I think she was prepping me because she maybe knew that he would mention it and that we've had some conversations about that and what that looks like for us and how to discuss that. And then I guess I'm not saving it. And then here we go. <laughs> that, Buckle uh, up. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> we can circle back to this. Or you don't have to, whatever. <laughs> I know this is a very, it's probably dicey for all of us in different ways, but um, then he, when I got in the car, he said, I said, Hey, I forgot about it for a little bit. And then I was like, not important to the story. <laughs> I forgot about it for a little bit and then said, Oh yeah. What, what uh, was the thing about Jesus? What did you? And he said, um, yeah, why did those guys kill him? Why'd those bad guys kill him? And I was like, Oh God. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, um, and then, and then I, uh, handled that. And then, and he's, and I said, what else did she tell you? And he said, um, well, he's the king of God. And I was like, mm, okay. Because um, we've had conversations about Jesus, just so anybody that is in my family listens to it. But it's like, it, anyway, I'm trying to have age-appropriate conversations. And oh. that was fun. I know. To, to give a succinct answer to those big questions that mm-hmm. you're still deconstructing or mm-hmm. just, mm-hmm. yeah, sometimes I just go, blah, 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 you know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. He also the other day said, how can a... Um, uh, a person be a boy and a girl at once. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. okay. So, you know. Yep. And your background in religion is? Um, I grew up going to Methodist church, um, but my mom was very open and like essentially what I learned from her and what I still believe is that um, God is everywhere. Everybody's God is um the same God and connected and, um, and like I grew up going to a Christian church and you know that, so that 
resonates with me, but I also don't think it's fair to say that no one else is going to heaven or to, to experience an afterlife that, you know, and I don't, I don't know that I think everything is all divided up. So I have my own, yeah, that's, you know, I'm version same, of that. Yeah. And then I hear same wave, yeah. people say that that's bad in some ways and the way that they describe it being bad. Then I'm like, well, it does, the way you're saying it does sound bad, but it just feels right in my soul. But I also told, I texted Joy last night and said, and I also still at the same time kind of feel like, well, if this is wrong, like I'm saying to God in my head, like, if this is wrong, like, can you just understand that I was just like, doing my pass. best? Oh, I know. And please I, don't like strike me with lightning. I just, I'm really trying. And like, if he is your son, like that sounds great. He seems like incredible, perfect person. I understand. And that's, I did say that to Parker. Like I didn't not say that. I'm not saying he's not. I'm just saying that everybody else also can be right. Mm-hmm. And whatever you believe is fine. Which I is just, hard to describe to a child. He, and he even said, to uh, to other people as well. I know. What no. did he say? He said, "This is confusing." <laughs> <laughs> he went, "This is confusing," and I feel tired. Oh. And I said, "I know. Me too. Let's not talk about this." But Let's just table so you know, it till you're here's what we know 20. is absolutely true for sure. And we can talk about the rest of it later, but whatever you believe is okay. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I, I think believe. at this stage, if I said the things to Ziggy, she would be the, I like turtles response. Right. Mm. She, yeah. That, yeah. Priorities. That would be good. He does. Yeah. He's kind of intense. So, yeah. Yeah. Ziggy too. Yeah. She wrote a story the other day. She was, I, I was sitting there with her while she was pooping. <laughs> and she started telling me the story about Harris and Gandhi and just went in, she's four, and just went into this beautiful story about this woman who rode her bike and kept falling off of it. And she was part of the uh, the movie of God. And I was like, okay. what? The movie of God. The movie of God. And I was like, what's that movie about? <laughs> she was like, rainbows and unicorns. And I was like, please. <laughs> Can it yes. be? I like that. Can that be? It? Yeah. I'm open to that. So she should start a church and that sounds like where we want to go. That's where we want to go. Great. We can start it. The movie of God church. That makes yeah. me feel better that she was talking about that. Yeah. And they're asking about that. That's not, oh, I yeah. want him to who care is God? anyway. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, who is God? That question was just. Mm. Mm-hmm. So maybe he did ask, but I don't know. I think she knows she's in trouble. So yeah, she was trying to cover it up. Anyway, that's all. Nice. That is interesting, you? navigating the uh, grandparent, sending them there, oh, what they hear, yeah. coming, been coming v- back. Yeah, Very, 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 very clear about boundaries on all yeah. levels, because mm-hmm. historically she makes some pretty cavalier, like, thing, like, statements to the nieces, or, like, to the grandkids, yeah. but... Well, you so. said she was open. Well, oh, no, oh, oh yeah, and I forgot, I left out that she it, um, got closed... <laughs> Later, she done and her sealed it. Became, <laughs> be, became very um, important to her in a really beautiful way, and I, I support. And you don't want to take it away from her, right? It's her, right? No, I mean, I, I will have like the, you know my like the honest conversations, and I'll say like, do you remember this? So it's confusing a little bit, but it also like has been really great for her. So whatever, yeah. yeah. Joy, and she's respectful. You? Go ahead. Yes. Um, other than being annoyed at filling out pre-K information online. The thing I was thinking about this week was I went and got coffee by myself on my time off last week and saw a lady out on the porch with a dog. And in my mind, I was like, oh, if I were here with Penny, I'd be talking to that lady because she has a dog. Penny would have said hi to that person. And that like, it made me I obviously enjoy being out without my toddler, but it made me appreciate how much she opens my world when I am out with her, mm-hmm. like expands my environment mm-hmm. drastically. And I love that about her. And mm-hmm. Ava did that too, but there's something about Penny that's just, I mean, she just announces herself when she enters a space and when she leaves, but not in a way that she's wanting the attention in a way that she's giving the, the love to everybody. And it's just so, she's just so precious. Jeremy took her every time we go by Starbucks. She wants a cake pop. But she's been insistent that, 
because Jeremy will just park and run in and get it. And she's like, can I come in with you? Can I come in with you? No, please let me come in with you. And, and it's like for such a short period of time, no parent in their right mind wants to get their kid out of the car seat for like literally 15 seconds. But he got her out yesterday. And now we know why. It's because she'll walk in and she'll be like, hey, guy. Like he said the entire no the entire Starbucks was like, hey. He was like, she had them all wrapped around her finger. She walks in just greeting. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, bye. Happy buddy. That is so sweet. <laughs> so I was like, She's oh, very cute. now she wants, that's why she wants to go in all the time. Cause it's like probably one of the highlights of her day. She's <laughs> <laughs> getting to say hey to all those people. Who are people? <laughs> <laughs> what is people? What is people? Anyway, that's, that's about it. What is, well, not without saying obviously where is she, is Ziggy going into kindergarten next year? Or are you going to do another year of pre-K or what's that going to be like? She just turned four, so okay. she has another Got it. year of Got it. pre-K. Okay. So we're in Brentwood, mm-hmm. have been there since 2010, mm-hmm. and I found this house, and you know Kevin was on the east side, and he's like, why are we going to look at this house in Brentwood, all our friends, you know, and I was like, just trust me. Mm-hmm. And the house has been amazing for us. Uh, it's just been this little creative haven. But when Ziggy came along, it just, the how it, we've grown out of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. And we miss our friends. Just all of our closest people are over on the east side and the community. And we live in a cul-de-sac with a bunch of type A people that are constantly doing stuff to their yard. Oh, I would not do well there. We'd get mm. kicked out. Oh, man. Oh, uh, so you want to move back into town? Yeah, we've looked for years. I mean, we... Before we even had Ziggy, we were starting to look to get back, but then the market's crazy. But it's wild. Mm -hmm. But saying that, I don't know where Ziggy's going to go to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So going back to (laughs) post-C-section, what were, Mm. how, how was that first year for you? How was uh, your postpartum experience? So I remember the first the first while, like maybe three or four months, I was in a good space, but it was, you know, I kind of think about, I've already struggled with depression most of my life, adult life, I would say more so. Um, I did feel anxiety creeping in, leading up to birth, thinking about the reality. Mm -hmm. I remember saying to Kevin the week before, "I, I don't think I can do this. And he's like, oh, it's going to be easy, babe. And he was dead serious. It's going to be easy. (laughs) (laughs) I've thrown that in his face a few times. (laughs) Uh, But when she first got here, I think Kevin had had his postpartum before you, before me. The, The first eight months was really hard for him. Um, and I think because of that, <clears throat> he was very involved, but also I knew I had to stay strong. Right. I got to be mm-hmm. okay. Cause my partner's not yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. And so my parents live here. They were so helpful. Kevin was so helpful, but I mean, Ziggy from the moment she came out of the womb was intense. You know, I mean, C-section arms outstretched to me, like, <laughs> you know, and you're like, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the universe just shifted, and she cried a lot. She had um, acid reflux, mm. and so she really couldn't be left down. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so we had to hold, hold her, her all the time, mm. all the time, and she just seemed uncomfortable, always like. Eh. And I just remember being in the living room, and we've got all these windows out to the woods, and I'm sitting there like doing the thing where you're standing up and doing almost like. Uh, Squats. Like, yeah, crazy squats. Squats, and that would really calm her. So I'm sitting there doing that with her crying, and I hear Kevin out in the woods, and you just hear... <laughs> chopping wood. Chopping wood. <laughs> he found his new outlet. It was just his release. <laughs> and good for him that he knew that that's what he needed to do. Um, and then, so I feel like eight months, nine months... He, I mean, he's, he, he was stable before then, but it, it, that's where it kind of, the lid opened up for me. 
Mm-hmm. And I got back into um, to therapy, but I, I uh, found breathwork therapy to really help me um, kind of, I guess, as a release, you know, because also COVID. Mm-hmm. So the trappings of both things, you know, you just, like, you're going through all these emotions and you're having to stay so calm and peaceful for your child. Mm-hmm. So it was like, wh- where do I howl? Mm-hmm. Where do I... Where do I scream? Where do I get this out? Because you're just feeling like you're constantly just being boxed, mm-hmm. you know? And then you feel guilty for that feeling. You're like, I'm only supposed to feel these openings. And you do at the same time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it takes, not, it takes a while to learn or to realize like that there's room for all. Room for all. All of the feelings. I know. Um, breath work like... A, a little bit about that. Like, do you do, you do it on your own and you know how to do it? And did you have somebody guiding you and do you go in to have that, do that still also? So I found breath work actually before, before Ziggy. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a really intense experience. It was with my therapist at the time and she was trained in it. And so it's almost like holotropic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like the hero journeys that that mm-hmm. people do mm-hmm. with mushrooms, but just sans drugs. Yeah. And <clears throat> so I the the first time that I did it, I I was in such a I, I think it was uh, when I was trying to get pregnant, I was coming off of antidepressants, mm-hmm. and I just was in such a dip and needed help. And so I did this breath work and had a major rebirth mm-hmm. vision. Mm. You know, I was I was like a lobster on the floor, completely cramped up like this. Yeah, yeah, totally. Hand. Have you done it before? I do it a lot. Yes. No way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and what's you're happening? Next. It's a uh-huh. holotropic breath work is where it's like your brain is you're breathing <sighs> is one way, and then um, you know. So I don't know if everybody's the that same, is but one you're way, yeah. Like uh, you can kind of do the in your nose twice, mm-hmm. and then. <sighs> Oh, uh, yeah. That's how I, that's my running breathing. Is it? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, wait, I want to hear your story, but I was just going to explain to them that you're just, like, your brain's a little deprived of oxygen, but you go into a trance state. Yeah. And it's, it's incredible. Al- it's almost a um, hyperventilation, <clears throat> mm-hmm. right? Because it's switching the carbon dioxide, but it it kind of takes away your ego mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. brings a consciousness that is there and you're just, like, sitting in your essence. Mm-hmm. That's and, lovely to think of it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I didn't until uh, a different kind of life coach kind of came into play later where I was able to kind of blend this, those tools to be really constructive mm-hmm. to support me. But um, yeah, that first first experience was insane. I, I was so cramped up, sweating, and then really cold. And not really seeing any visions, but it was kind of like all of a sudden everything just went and certain people in my life, I just started seeing like clarity came to certain situations, Mm -hmm. but in a dreamlike state. So Mm -hmm. it wasn't fully concrete. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, and I was still cramped up and it was kind of the peak release moment. I opened my eyes in the vision and I was in my parents' arms looking out in the hospital and I was a baby and I felt every single piece of anxiety and grief and question of life float away. Mm -hmm. And I remember going home that night, calling Kevin just, I mean, it's, he's like, are you on something? (laughs) Yeah. It's like, yes, joy. (laughs) I have found the center of my joy. Yeah. You know, and I had been just clawing for it. Um, it had been so long since I had felt it. So Mm. I knew that experience was helpful and important. And I kind of forgot about it while I was, uh, pregnant and first having Ziggy. But then I, I I went back to it and have since made it a regular practice. Maybe I, for a while I was doing it every other week with my, with my therapist on zoom. 
Mm-hmm. Which nice. was how, and you're laying down, you're in mm-hmm. the dark. I put, um, and then I have headphones on and she filters a, um, a playlist, mm-hmm. you know, that's like chanting sometimes mm-hmm. she started putting some contemporary songs. And I was like, no, 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 I can't, <laughs> I can't hear real lyrics. Right. Right. Too distracting. It's too, yeah, yeah. Too close to home. Yeah. Um, do you see, did you do that because it was 20, like, cause it was COVID and you were doing it remotely or do you still do it that way? I actually love it. Yeah. Cool. I feel like I remotely, you mean? remotely. Yeah. Cause I'm in my bedroom. Yeah. Um, I feel I've always been inhibited around, I mean, even like perform, perform, this is off subject, but on subject. Mm-hmm. Uh, my parents were always like, it's okay if you show off. Right. If you're like, cause I grew up dancing. They're always like, you can let go. It's okay. You're good at it. Like just let go. And I always, I didn't want, I didn't want to show off or whatever. It's just inhibitions. It's the pressure that I put. Are you on a myself. perfectionist, would you say? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be, but yeah. Yeah. To an extent. I think, oh, well, yeah. I, th- I, I am too, but it took me a long time to, I think, admit that I was. Mm-hmm. I geek out, geek out on details. I love, I love mm-hmm. it. I love analyzing things and understanding why they are that, and it's just, I like the beauty in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's also with that, that, I don't know why that makes me think of this, but how me and my husband differ. He's, so, he is an optimist and he's excitable and Just when he like sees throw something it against the and, wall and, and, and impulsive <laughs> and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and he doesn't think about the things that could go wrong. And I'm completely opposite. And, but I don't like, he sees it as pessimistic sometimes and it can be seen as that. And I know I can be, but I don't like, I, again, find the beauty in the things that are wrong or sad or all that, Mm -hmm. the beauty and the anxiety of it. But yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that. Well, I was going to cut. Yeah. I was also (laughs) going to ask what becoming a mom and that, uh, shape shifting your creative life and Mm. when you felt furthest from that and how you started filtering that back in and I don't just that process for you. Oh gosh. I mean, we could talk for hours about all of this stuff. I know. Mm-hmm. It's hard to yeah. skim the surface. Mm-hmm. Um, I you mean, can skip that if it's too. Yeah. I mean, oh no, we don't have to skip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing, yeah, let's, nothing's let's too. You hate our questions. That. Fine. No, no, no. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I love all of this. Um, I feel like everything that I was just saying that I am is almost impossible in motherhood to operate from that space. Right. Um, so when I had her, I feel like I, it was like throwing my whole identity on the floor, breaking into a million pieces and then picking this piece up and going, I think I recognize this. I don't know what it is. I don't know how it fits and trying to shape it back. Mm -hmm. And it's a totally different thing. The systems of, you know, um, preparing because everything's improv, right? And improv scares the shit out of me, like <laughs> on every level. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because what if something goes wrong? The self preservation in me is just holding on tight, mm-hmm. and you can't hold on tight to anything. Um, and I never really could, but I, it, I didn't have to answer to that before a kid. I could isolate and prepare and mm-hmm. go over things and do, you know, get everything just how I wanted it. Yeah. I had the time to do it. And now you just don't have the well, time to do that. Yeah, and it's and, not, you're like, oh, yeah, I can yeah. do this my own time. I can spend it how I want. I'm yeah. not affecting anybody else by preparing this way. Right. And then literally every <laughs> single moment of your life is affecting <laughs> someone else. 100%. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I just want to do whatever I want to do. I know. The idea that something suffers, like if you mm. choose one thing and then like... Eric or, or Parker or me or whatever. It's always, or work, something is gonna, Mm -hmm. that's not, yeah, that's a really, that's a negative way to look at it, but it does feel like that. Like sometimes if I'm stressed and that, like I can explain my angst through that. Yeah. I I was thinking about this week, just that, that idea comes up a lot that we are, wherever our attention goes, 
it means it's not somewhere else that mm-hmm. maybe we feel like is also important or should be there, or, you know, the guilt. We talk a lot about the guilt. Yeah. And I know this, but for some reason thinking of it this way made me feel a little better about it this w- <laughs> this week at least. <laughs> I don't know how long it'll last, but I think every generation of women especially is trying to change the narrative. Some like the narrative's different for every generation and I feel like ours is motherhood is a really big one about how do we do it all? How do we find the balance? How do we not give up ourselves Mm -hmm. to raise our kids? How do we be happy moms so that we can have happy kids, all the things. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I was just thinking like, Oh, I'm, I'm carrying all of this guilt for not knowing which decisions are the right decisions and which things are worth the sacrifice. I'm feeling all this guilt so that my girls don't have to feel all this guilt when they're making these decisions and not that they won't still feel guilty, but they're not seeing, they're not seeing our guilt. They're just seeing Mm -hmm. all the things we're going out and doing. And I was just like, I don't know. It made it feel a little more worth it. Like, just how hard this is trying to find some sort of balance and trying to be happy and be present with your kids. And where does your guilt reside? Um, I will feel a lot of guilt that like the things I get really excited and motivated about are just for me. (laughs) I get it. Yeah, I get it. But I also am like, I think getting married really young and getting pregnant young, Mm -hmm. uh, I just didn't, and not that I would have taken advantage of it when I had the time. I just think I didn't really know myself until my thirties. I didn't really know what I wanted until my thirties. And then there's all this, just the pressure of time to be like, well, I have to go after it. If Mm -hmm. I know what I want, it's, I'm already halfway through my life. Like I got to, yeah. I know I don't need to hustle as as much as I probably think I do, but there is a portion of that that is a reality that, you know, I also, I don't know. I and there's it. guilt in that and going, yeah. oh, I should just stop, stop hustling and, and just be because these are the magic years and they're going to pass and mm-hmm. whatever the whole, all of it. All of that <laughs> is wrapped up in a, in the judge and I talk about this all the time because it was, um, it's just, I feel like the, the front seat or the head of the table of my inner world so often is just the judge. And I've written a letter. And, and so I have a woman, her name's Glenda, and I call her the good, the good witch. witch. Oh, I love her to death. Um, we did some work together and... It was very similar to internal family systems, just all all of our parts. And she had me write letters from the voice of the judge was the first one that I did and writing it to myself. And the first line was, you're out of time, mm-hmm. you know, and it just, it's like just the dick inside of you. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Yes. <laughs> You she's can keep had, that. She's had her espresso. <laughs> but the, the dick that is inside all of us, the, the voice, the dick voice. <laughs> I'm just gonna just gonna keep uh, pound, pounding that one. Yeah. Yeah. Double down. <laughs> um but the so I wrote this letter to myself from that voice and then read it to my inner child Mm. because that's really who it was to. Mm -hmm. So just imagining myself at four years old, you know, and having Ziggy being able to kind of visualize that and say these things was so, so cruel, so cruel. And so just, I can't believe that I say these things to myself. Mm -hmm. And then she had me turn the, the letter around to advocate and so the advocate voice, and I just pretty much flipped every sentence to the positive. And 
I have it in my phone. I mean, it is. It was like she's like, you just wrote yourself a, you know, a, a resolution to your life. Keep it and and reference it because it really it was like unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Just the switching that the judge, you know, putting the advocate at the head of the table, putting little Aaron at the head of the table, and just saying, you know, there there's belief. Mm-hmm. I've lost belief. There's belief. You can have that. You know, I'm saying this so on the surface. I wish that we could talk about this. For no, I'm like hours, incredibly into it. Mm-hmm. That's one that that is the voice that it, I think after having a child, like because you're putting so much effort and all your creative energy, all your any energy to that person. So to in the creative field, you know, just finding mm-hmm. finding my belief again to be able to yeah. Like, cause every, every voice says you can't, you can't do it. Why are you doing this? You're getting old. Yeah. You know, it's like, what, who cares? Yeah. All these things. Well, and that's what I mean about like, I feel like we are all trying to battle that yeah. guilt and change, change those voices and yeah. decide which ones we're giving power so that our kids maybe don't have those same battles. Cause we've already fought them for them. And we're like, yes, you are mm-hmm. like, my girls are going to know from day one, like just because you're giving life to somebody else does not mean your life stops. Like, right. It's not a question. I I don't, there, I feel like there were just so many conversations that, uh, did not exist that we are all having conversations about. I know. I'm so thankful for that so that we can just feel a little more. Our parents didn't get that. They didn't, they Mm -hmm. didn't get to talk to their friends about it. They're they're fighting other, (laughs) they're fighting other battles for us. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Maybe they, uh, maybe your girls or our kids in general have similar battles, but they have the tools or they have some point of reference for where to start or something, something more. (laughs) That's my hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it it really did make me feel like all the overwhelming things, all the things that it feels like we're pushing against or trying to figure out or trying to find answers for, it just made it all seem a little more normal Mm -hmm. and a little more like, oh, this is all for something so much bigger and it's all for my kids. So instead of thinking I'm doing all this for myself, I'm doing all this for myself, I really also am trying to become a whole human, <laughs> right? whole mom, whole human for my kids. So I don't know, just that yeah. idea of like, it's all working mm-hmm. together and we don't have to freak out so much that, yeah. I mean, again, there like is, there's th- space for all of it. There's an overload of information for all of us. Like I, I, the positive <sighs> is that we get so many scripts, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, our, our parents had Dr. Spock and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> if that, <laughs> if that. And so with, but with that just comes so much noise, Mm -hmm. like everything else in our life, you know? So it's like trying to navigate, like trying to navigate for me. Yeah. Yeah. And all the, and all the self-help. Like, I mean, I talk about the breath work, the therapy, all of the things, and I've done so much, but at a certain point it's like, let's just do this, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of let that, let that, uh, grow. And just act, just do, I, I've had to, I've, I'm kind of in that mode right now. It's like, you're like, I've retained a bunch of different I things. I could over therapize, <laughs> you know, right. yeah, I could, I could do that for, for days and days, but just act. And so it's like, this is the scary part. Cause it's getting the, cause you, you know, might mess up the toes out mm-hmm. of the dirt and it, you know, it's, I've been standing on top of the mountain, just like, I got to take this step, but ooh, do I go this way? Oh, do I go this way? And it's just like, oh, just take the fucking step. Yeah. So I'm kind of doing that little by little, Mm -hmm. writing with new people, saying that I'm Mm -hmm. doing a new project, which feels so scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But exciting too. And it's like, oh, there you are. Yeah. You got to start talking about it. Yeah. It's the opening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trusting yourself. My therapist says your body knows how to do this work. Um, And I think... And I think that a lot in like all different ways because I mean it means just really trust yourself like you know the answers a lot of times and maybe it's because you learned them from somebody else maybe it's because you just like inherently know them but that's really hard for me is trusting myself but I mm-hmm. I, mean, I used to 
Like I, I feel I like really didn't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I've, I've never experienced it. Yeah. <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> no, yeah. I did. I feel like it. It was very helpful for me. I feel like in my twenties, there's naivety. I mean, just and but just the energy of youth, you know. Mm-hmm. But I would have very clear visions of. I want to do that. Mm, so, mm-hmm. and, and just, and I had belief, I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. And I would do it. Mm-hmm. And I lost it along the way. Mm. So I'm, I feel like I'm rebuilding it and just discovering. And, you know, just one of the best things is staying curious. Yeah. That's, every time I get in that like grind and that whole, that chokehold, I have to just go curiosity. And I swear it just like, it, it relieves a little bit of it takes the power out of the the choke mm. Ooh, that's good yeah that uh yesterday i was thinking um i think i don't know about trusting myself maybe like very early on before any of like the soul splintering or whatever happens to yeah. <laughs> yourselves but <laughs> the, um um but i was fearless like even if yeah. i like maybe i was scared but i was just like yeah i'm just going to do this as i'm doing this this right. is what's happening yep yeah. Don't care. Don't care. Maybe that's the caring, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that people makes sense. say you don't care when you get into your 40s. But mm. that's kind of, that's not true for me. Mm. But maybe just um uh, yeah, how far in do you have to be? Cuz I that's what I've been looking forward to. <laughs> I feel like I've been do you sold turn 40 that this year. This year? Mm-hmm. Oh, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. How far in? Yeah, I don't know. Right. I'm like is it going to yeah. I would like it to be like 41. I mean, maybe you don't. Yeah. It's, a, it's just a different, it just, it, it's what people say about does each year get easier with kids and everyone's always like, it's just different. It's a different kind of hard. <laughs> also, I think all the people that were telling us that weren't having kids as late. Yeah. So yeah, we're like, into we're finally getting to the age we're supposed to figure ourselves out, but then we're thrown into motherhood and being like, I don't know. I know nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. We do. Yes, we do. Your body knows how to do this work. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You guys hungry? I am. Yeah. I'm thinking about like some bagels, some Mm. schmears, Mm. maybe some pasta. Yeah. I bet they've got other stuff now that we don't even know about. Mm -hmm. Fine goods. It's all really, really good. What are we talking about? We're talking about Mr. Aaron's Goods. Yes. Mm. Locally owned, family lovely, um, all very involved and everything is fresh and good and wonderful and incredibly quick to prepare meals that Mm -hmm. you can pick up in East Nashville at TKO. Is it Monday through Friday? I'm not going to get their hours right, but you should look them up on Mr. Aaron's Goods. It's M-R-A-A-R-O-N-S-G-O-O-D-S.com. And you can use code MOMCOLT for 20% off your order at Mr. Aaron's Goods.com. And if you live in East Nashville, they'll deliver. For free on Saturdays, yeah. Yep. Check them out. (laughs) What do you wish uh, someone would have told you before you had kids? Do you have like a thing? It's funny because I I feel like anyone could have said anything and I I wouldn't... I wouldn't have retained it. I wouldn't know it, yeah. In a meaningful way, yeah. Yeah, because I think about what I want to tell people that are having kids and it's so hard because you don't want to be negative Mm -hmm. and it's also it's like any of the what do you say yeah Yeah. what do you say to that (laughs) yeah I get the like um the things that people like the just focusing on the beauty I get that the former generation for the most part I feel like focusing on that because that is to me it ends up being what I what I say yeah because there is so much beauty in it and why would you not Right. But I think it's good to be, you know, you're good at that. Um, I think seeking, I don't have any of these point of references, but somebody was talking yesterday on a radio show that I listened to about philosophy. I don't like really this kind of, this conversation or this type of conversation, but how our generation is, you know, everybody's depressed and blah, 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 suicide rates, whatever, whatever, all these things about everything being a bummer. And one of the the things that this study posited was that we're disconnecting from the meta or like, you know, the spiritual sides of ourselves, even through religion, because it's like God being this untouchable um, being in the sky and everything being really kind of boxed and how we used to, you know, 
listen to our, uh, study our dreams and the earth and connecting to those things and, and also God has got all of those things. And, and I feel like what you've been describing to me, there's a lot of that in there, which is, there's a lot of wisdom in that connecting mm. to that, seek that. It's so um, true. You know, the King of God, as Parker said. <laughs> <laughs> We've like, got the King like of God, the movie of God. Seek yeah. the cane. The rainbow, rainbow butterflies. The land. cane of God. I mean, yeah. breathwork therapy, <laughs> like the, um, that's one of the closest I've felt to God in a long time. Oh, uh, yeah. Is because you, uh, it sounds, I think I've got so many things that I could talk about with, with religion. One of the uh, stick points for me that it's been so hard, the saying, go in the way of the world. Did you ever hear that? Uh, oh, like secular stuff? Is that what like, they, don't, is that the point? Yeah, don't yes. go in oh. the way of the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So when I start saying things like, I feel like we are God, mm. that connection, that current, that energy, you know, that energy that it, like, I feel like it cheapens the experience of God by, mm-hmm. because I have guilt saying it because it sounds quote unquote new agey which was bad when I was young and it wasn't pounded down on my head you know I have very loving parents my dad is still very strong in his faith and it's the most important thing to him and my mom has she missed her uh women's lib moment when it was happening because she was she was more conservative and traditional and submissive Christian wife. And now she's like, wow. I'm surprised she didn't have the hairy pits to to match, but she's loving the, the liberation and, um, and wanting to fight for that. And, uh, so that causes a little bit of friction there, but yeah, that was going to be my next question. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I mean, and, where was that? Where, how did this start? We were talking about um, growing up religious. Oh, so growing up in a loving, it wasn't like we had to go to sun, Sunday school every mm-hmm. Sunday mm-hmm. and everything, and b- not Bible beating or whatever, but just the very subtle messaging is nuts. Yeah. And what it's done to my brain and what I've had to deconstruct um, just for me. I don't, I don't want to take any of my dad's practice to totally. to mm-hmm. reach God away from him. Right. But I also don't want him to fear my afterlife mm-hmm. where like, I want him to know that we'll be together, mm-hmm. but it's hard. Uh, I don't know when, when you, when you believe his set, it's hard, you know, for that to ever line up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I don't think his set is wrong, but he may think mine is, I don't know. Yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. I feel, yeah. um, I know I'm scared because I want him to hear this podcast. So he'll probably hear this. <laughs> hey, Dad. <Right. laughs> no, not scared, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. I won't, I won't say it as eloquently as uh, this gentleman put it, but I watched a, a TikTok of a guy giving a really amazing um, analogy of, of a house and its structure and its foundation and him be, growing up inside this house and feeling like there's all these cracks and no one in the house is, is seeming to acknowledge that they're there or that they matter. And anyway, it was, it, he put really well, a lot of the things that I have been mm-hmm. I don't, yeah, just trying to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all want the same thing. Yeah. Every human does right. To an extent. Generally speaking. Generally speaking. I know. I know. Without... I, this, yeah. No, yes, we all do. Yeah. Um, Dr. Becky, you know, I love how she... Uh, how just the product, good inside. Yeah. Right. like, we weren't taught that. No, that's already... <laughs> yeah. It's already greatly changing the narrative <laughs> yeah. that we grew up with. I know. And even having... I mean, you've got this little baby at home, and you're like, good inside. I mean, even when Ziggy's just throwing massive fits you're just like she's so good inside i mean and we i even though i grew up in a lovely home i wasn't taught that because of just the church that we went you know yeah mm-hmm. that's not what you're it's constant shame yeah 
Well, yeah. And it plays a lot into, um, I think why we struggle with belief in ourselves as adults is because it was always about God. You like had that's to. where all that's where I get everything that like I'm not I'm nothing without that and so I think the older I'm getting, and the more I am kind of deconstructing and trying to figure those things out as you're going, and I do feel like I'm something without that, but I don't I don't know what I don't even know if I'm allowed to think that like <laughs> that is my that is the number one thing it's like a dis uh, I feel like it causes disassociation and disembodiment right embodiment is where I feel like in my 40s, having a child, going through these really hard questions and therapy and everything, I feel like I'm coming to terms with and finding embodiment. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, totally. And that is exciting and a good place to be as a mother. Mm -hmm. You know, being able to be in your body is has been so hard for me, and I didn't even realize it until later in life. Yeah. And I think religion played the, a big part of that because you, yeah, you have shame reaching within and not up reaching out. Yeah. When you can do all the things mm-hmm. like right now we are in communion with God. Yeah. God is in this room <laughs> right now. <laughs> Which is exciting. I mean, it's so beautiful. Yes, totally. I, I was going to say, you, uh, I don't know exactly how you worded it, but you couldn't do those things without God or, or like, what did you like, say? The, yeah. the one sentence it was. Um, that it's almost like you're growing up being like, well, just pray about it. Mm. Just pray about it. Pray about it. Like all your questions, all, everything is like, is you're waiting on some sort of push or response from this other source. And the older I got, I'm like, the more I realized like, I have to be that source for myself. Yeah. And, and do you feel and a am tinge I allowed, of guilt? Right. When you say am that? I allowed to do yeah. that? That seems selfish. That seems so, you know, whatever. Just trying to find my own way to where it can all work together and make sense because mm-hmm. I, I am a stickler for like, that's why choices are hard for me because I want to pick the right choice. I want to pick the best choice. And the more choices there are, the more paralyzed I get. So, yeah. analysis paralysis. Yeah. Just trying yeah. to go. Am I allowed to? Mm -hmm. I think just practically the tools I learned growing up weren't working for what I needed to do to push myself forward in my own realistic life. And, uh, and yeah, I didn't grow up exactly. I mean, I didn't grow up, you know, with as I don't think as much structure in my religious life as, as it sounds like or as I know that y'all did, um, but we, you know, that was around, but my point is the way that my mom thought, um, you know, helped me f- keep an open mind to that, which it sounds like y'all do. I think this might come out. My, the point that I'm trying to make is I've always kept a thread of that God is everywhere and it's just this thing, us, you, whatever it is. So I do need that. And that's always present. Mm-hmm. And that thread is is really helpful. And I hope, or I don't know, I don't I need to think about what everybody else is doing. I'm just saying that's, I just, I'm, try, my, I'm trying to think of how to say that to Parker because I want him to have that. It is really important to me. Um, yes, I, I know. I want Ziggy the same. I want her to have some sort of structure Yeah. with the way that she is able, like just some something to hold on to versus it's a mystery. Right. Totally. And, and like what, whatever. Nobody knows. Nobody somebody's knows. going to be out there because saying. Because that is true. It is mystery and curiosity and like that you want to foster that, but. You want to give him something. because give him something. Otherwise he's going to hear some really definitive things and and why not? Why wouldn't I believe the, the or they're just go with the definitive thing versus the, well, this is what I think. And like, I don't, you know. Anyway, I mean, no matter what we do, I don't know that I'm equipped to tackle this, to be honest, in like a public forum. None of us, because we're all trying to build a whole new house, but I just don't know what tools to use and what (laughs) things are going to be useful. What I'm trying to say is, I feel really (laughs) confident in my house. I just don't know how to describe it exactly. Yeah, but I just, it's always, this has always been how it has has felt to me. I just. Did, I've never had to put words to it to teach someone. Well, yeah. I tell him, but it doesn't really yeah. matter so much to me if any. I don't give a shit if anybody thinks the same thing. I don't care. Right. That's kind of the point. Is that I don't. Yeah. You don't need to think the same. That's fine. Yeah. Whatever you think, literally, I whatever think you way, think is fine. What it sounds like, though, the way you're loving him and loving on him and 
it's like that's yeah that will show him yeah yeah god i mean really well Mm -hmm. and even if he decides to venture into hardcore christianity or right hardcore whatever like that foundation that you're giving him right now is really sweet and i think yeah well sometimes i just go the more especially at ava's age now the more that i can just put her in different scenarios and she can see how a bunch of different people live and what a bunch of different people think Mm -hmm. and that can at least I grew up with no options. There was no Mm -hmm. world outside of this is, this is the way that it is. And everyone around me was like, yep. Very similar. So until you're out of that, do Mm -hmm. you even know that other people think differently, but still seem to have the same moral compass that you do just without all the rules? (laughs) I always felt like, what, there's gotta be more. I mean, yeah, I grew up in a suburb outside of Dallas um, in Texas and I didn't meet. I didn't meet a Jewish person until after college, maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure I did meet, but I I wasn't close to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it was just. Mm. So I'm saying like as far as not feeling all that pressure on yourself, Mm. like just you being friends with all different kinds of people, Mm. he's going to be exposed to all different kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. And help form and then help form his own like what he feels drawn to or what, I don't know. Yeah. And like one or two, exp- like, you know, um, well, we all know Sarah Buxton and mm-hmm. I met her when I was like 13. She was good friends with my sister, long story short. And she told me about, what's the pa- Paolo Ke- Colo? Or I can't know how to pronounce his name, but um, he wrote some book. The, oh, I forget. I want to say it's the page master, but it's not that. That's just what we watch. That's the Macaulay Culkin wanna- movie. <laughs> The point is he just that one experience at like my sister's wedding with Sarah Buxton when I was like 13 had like a profound effect on my, on pushing me forward in like a mm, earth connection, mystical, you know, spirituality. Mm -hmm. So even, you know, he's going to meet a ton of different people. Anyway, what I'm saying is he's fine and (laughs) our kids are all going to be fine. Uh, Do you remember the, like, so you're saying Sarah was one of that conversation was one of the first conversations you had where it was like, maybe what I, no, no, no. My mom really did do a good, I mean, I'm not trying to brag. I don't mean to, (laughs) she did do a really good job of like we, you know, exposing me to all different ideas. And she literally was like, Buddha, all of these things are the same thing. Everybody's doing the same thing. Sorry, mom. I mean, that is, that is what I gleaned from what you said. I'm not sure if that was my version of, um, he's the king of God, and I didn't really hear what you were saying, but that's how I right. processed it. Buddha, whatever. All those things are the same. Anyway, this has gone on. I didn't meet your whole thing was about religion. I'm I love realizing. it. Anyway, um, but so I did <clears throat> have that. But Sarah, just seeing somebody cool and older, I guess, and I'm just saying, in terms like of be being, confident in their yeah. their view. It was just some but, other stuff. Yeah, maybe I knew about like Buddhism and Judaism and all of these things, but I didn't really know about like this more mm-hmm. mystical thing. And that had, you know, sorry, huge impact just that one conversation you know yeah yeah well pop culture corner anyone <laughs> <laughs> who wants to talk about some tv shows oh you mentioned uh we are we are funny guys we do we do have another side to us it's true um we're a hoot yeah well that's our, it's funny because both of the things that i wrote down from the list of things that so many of which were f- so funny your yeah. suggestions for Pop Culture Corner was like the first season of True Detective and White Lotus, just the darkest things from what you Oh my said. God, I know, right? Time. <laughs> and speaking of religion, like how that whole um, Matthew McConaughey in the first season of True Detective talks about time and, and all of those things is like, I mean, I'm, that whole first season is just... It was insane. Incredible. You I know. You watched that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's been yeah. a long time. But you he- don't remember it. <laughs> um and I, I just want to see, does anybody else think you, have you, um, what's the other one? Oh, the, um, Truman Capote, the new one, the swans. Have you watched any of that? Mm-mm. I haven't started it yet, but I want to. The guy who's playing Truman Capote is also the guy who is the, um, older gay man who has the yacht in white Lotus and you know, his character mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. turns out to be Oof. so incredibly dark. Mm-hmm. And when I, like, I literally, that's one of the things that Joy's sister talks about media trauma and I truly am media traumaed, yeah. <laughs> traumatized by that, the, some of those scenes and that yeah. concept and, oh, it's just so dark. And, and, 
in the swans to that actor. I mean, just I'm worried about him. <laughs> the roles he's getting. Yeah. <laughs> what they're doing to his mental health. Yeah. Just, oh are my, you okay? Just, yeah. If he's, <laughs> he's doing great at his job. It's if just, he's a method uh, actor. Then uh, yeah. It's like, how does he uh, switch in and out? Mm, very dark. Just mm. so that both of them, actually, those two, like those are two scenes that like recently, I'm, this is just, it's, it's just a, it's such a rosy podcast. Veep, Arrested Development. Um, just Veep. saying the names. Yeah. That's just 30 saying, names of fun shows. Ted Lasso. Ted, yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Maisel. America's funny song oh, videos. Yeah, I love oh my Maisel. <laughs> But Veep, I've never laughed harder <laughs> in my life. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I wouldn't now because it's just a little too parallel to the reality. Reality. Mm -hmm. And but oh god. Did you not just did, did you see it all? Yeah, 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 yeah. I loved it. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And Tony yeah, Hale yeah. in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh man. I got to audition for a a movie, no, a movie that Tony Hale was going to be in. Oh, yeah. I wanted it. It was like the first oh. audition I had that I wanted so bad. Have you? Have either of you watched um, The Mysterious Benedict Society? Mm -mm. It's a really... It, bro, your kids are probably still too little for it, but when they're old enough, it's it's Tony Hale, and but he's got like a good... He plays like a, he's got a twin, so he plays a good twin and a, like an evil twin. Oh. Um, it's, a, it's a cartoon? No, but it's... Fantastic. Where is show. it? The kids like it or the yeah. moms? So like a tween show? Uh, both. Tween. I think Ava was probably, I don't know, probably like, I think like a six or seven year old could be into it. As far as like, it's a kid, like there's kids. It's about this group of kids that are kind of like solving this mystery. It's great. Cool. Yeah. We'll have to check it out. Did y'all see Severance? No, Not you mentioned all of that, it. and I almost went to. Are you kidding? To, I know. Jeremy I started can't. it. Yeah, that was my number one. He, um, Eric it, says I have to watch it, and I would love it so much. I started it. I don't even know why. It's just like so I feel like. Yeah, I watch just, just a lot of going. like I'm honestly right now just rewatching the nanny. Mm. I just I didn't turn my brain off. Yeah, the nanny. I never saw the nanny. The original one, like from for, not the '90s. No, mm. never saw it. Yeah, I don't know if you'd like it, but I just because it's like could she can. But I think she's her? awesome. Was it Fran, Fran Drescher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My point was not to talk about the nanny again. Because <laughs> I have, I think, the last three episodes. <laughs> I only but remember she, one. Well, that's where you are. She um but that's that I just world. will like want to turn my brain off usually. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Jeremy and I can well, I think shows like Severance, it just depends like where we are totally. in our life. And it's like, do I really want to spend my downtime being anxious or I know. worried or exactly. I know. know. I haven't we haven't really been watching anything. We've been kind of in our own little book worlds or what, uh, not me. He's been reading Elon Musk's biography. Biography. Ugh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Oof. just>, yeah. <laughs> I know. Ke Kev is so open to, um, right now he's just so interested in either alien, oh. AI, Mm -mm, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk. He wants to talk all about it. And I, I'm just like, I don't, I don't love the changes. Um, I didn't love the changes with social media. They're like, lot. social media is like notes in middle school. Right. I would never return the notes. My mom was like, you're going to lose your friends. You got to return the notes. And I was you like, gotta write back again, back to pressure. I put so much, I, I, I let like even text messages. It's like, I want to give all, all my attention to it. So I'm going to wait until I can fully be there and respond. Which and is that's never. How, and which is never. And I feel that way with social media. So I've kind of ducked out. Eric likes all that stuff too. And he knows that it stresses me out. So he doesn't talk to me about it for the most part. But if I bring up anything about it, or if somebody around us brings it up, then I realize really how much information he has and how <laughs> much he knows. And I'm like, holy shit, you have this whole other... Like world of knowledge, yeah. and he's he's like, oh, and I'm like, okay, just I start, I start to sweat. I literally start to sweat. Don't he? Me too. It's too yeah, I know. Um, I want to talk to you for so much longer. I know. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, just Thank like you, you said, guys. I know you're torn in a bunch of different directions, and it means a lot for us that you took the time to be here and be open and I'm share. So and honored. I love you guys. I hope that we didn't we didn't bum you out. I think it was a really you know I don't I don't get bummed out cool. about the heavy stuff. I okay, good. I love it. Yeah, me too. Okay, I'm trying to get comfortable. And we with hope it. you do too, I'm not listeners. Say I love it, but 
<laughs> but I did enjoy this. I mean, it feels, yeah, it's good. You can follow Erin McCarley at Erin McCarley on Instagram, although mm. she's not going to give you much, guys. <laughs> she's going to give you the Maybe bare I, minimum. I do kind of want to try to peek back in, just <laughs> see what's there. Just, I don't know. Yeah, because it is a creative outlet, so I need to treat it as that. You can follow us at Mom Cult Podcast on Instagram and themomcult.com. And if you review things, give us five stars and positive ratings if you'd like to. Thanks. Yeah. Share it with some friends. Share it with some other moms. All right. Love you, ladies. Thank you. Love y'all. Bye. Bye.